Okay. Well, we're asked to find out the weight of a bag that is exceeded by 99% of the bags. So I've drawn my diagrams again and I've said that that weight is x1 and so the probability of being more than x1 is given by this shaded area here, 99%. Okay, so let's just put that this value here is 99%. The probability that x is greater than x1 equals 99% or 0.99. Now to find out what that weight is we've got to get the equivalent z1 value and we know that z1 is given by the observed value in this case x1 minus the mean mu 50 all over the standard deviation sigma which is 2. Okay. Now we can only get x1 if we know z1 and there's various ways that we can do this. We can use our tables and most statistical books of tables have two sets in them, something like this. We have the probability then of being less than a given value of z, providing that z is generally to the right of the zero here. Or you have the inverse normal tables. They give you, a, once you've got a probability, say p here, they'll return the value z. Now, in a situation like this, if we've got 99% okay, shaded here, that leaves us obviously with 1% to the left of this Z1 value. But all the time we're working on the left. What we could do is mirror this to the right, okay? So that instead of looking at diagrams like this, we could be looking at a diagram something like this. Okay, I'll just sketch it on here. There's our Z and uh, if we just sketch that on like so with zero here. Let's put our z on this side, okay? We'll have a line down here. This area to the right of this z value, okay, is going to be 1% or 0 0.01. The area then to the left here is our 99%. 0.99. So when it comes to using this idea we could turn to this table, set of tables. If we can find 0.01 in those tables then we should be able to find out what this said value is. So if you look in these tables, if you happen to have them, you'll find not essentially 0.01 it must probably say 0 0.0100, somewhere on P. And against that, you'll have a Z value of 2.3263. Okay? So that would mean that if we were to use these tables, we've got this Z value to the right of 0 is 2.3263. But by symmetry, if we push it to the left-hand side of 0, as we have down here, it's got to be the negative equivalent, minus 2.3263. So you could have that Z1, let's just say from tables, okay, from tables, Z1 equals minus 2.3263. That's using these tables, and it gives us quite an accurate value. But you might want to use these tables. How do we do it then? Easy. All we've got to realize is that this area here would have to be the 0.99. So what we've got to look up in the tables is to try and find 0.99 in this column. But you might not find it exactly. In the tables I was using, I had a 0.9898 and also a 0.9904. Alright? And the corresponding Z values for these were 2.32 and 2.3263.
2.34. So there were lots of other values in between these, but which one was the one that's closest to 0 0.99? Well, it's clearly the 0.9898. So that was the one I would use, and the corresponding Z value was 2.32. This would be 2.32. But again, by symmetry, I wanted this value to the left of 0. So instead of it being 2.32 above 0, it's going to be minus 2.32 below 0. OK, so from table, Z1 either equals this value, or if you were using these tables, minus 2.32. So it's up to you which one you use. Examiners tend to allow a little bit of leeway between using these values. But now we can just substitute this into here. So if we were to do that, let's say we use the minus 2.32. Then we've got minus 2.32 okay, equals x1 minus the 50 over 2. And so all we need to do is multiply now both sides by 2 and add 50. And if you did that, x1, let's just show the working. That would be 50 minus 2 lots of 2.32. If you were to do that, x1 turns out to be 45.36. And if you rounded it, say, to one decimal place, 45.4 to 1 dp. And if you used Z1 was minus 2.3263 instead of the minus 2.32, you would find that X1 turned out to be 45.3474. But I'll leave you to do that, OK? Which is equal to 45.3 to one decimal place. Either way, you know, it's going to be an answer somewhere in this vicinity. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea then how to do that particular part of the question.